Today on Primetime? Is this month on Primetime? What? I know, it's crazy. We are going to do a one month, 30 day experiment on dry aging. We're gonna cut two ribeyes, these are from the same animal, the same amount of meat off of each, and then dry age both pieces, but one traditional dry age. Just gonna put it in there, let it do its thing. Let it do its thing. What are we gonna do the other one, B? Second one, we are going to cover in beef fat to completely seal it, let the enzymes keep working. To dry age it, we want to see, will it change the dry aged flavor? So do we think this is gonna be a better way to dry age? I don't know. I'm very optimistic about this. You're optimistic? Because- Usually I'm the optimistic one. This is weird. Uh, switching it up. I think coating the loin in fat will take away the funkiness, make it a little bit cleaner. I also think it's going to take the loss down. I think coating it in fat will be good. I think dry aging it and having the airflow is gonna be better. So dry age does two things. First, enzymatic process is breaking down all of the muscle fibers, making it more tender. Science, 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 blah, blah, blah. Two, water loss. The meat is just exposed to the element, so it is going to evaporate in some water. Let's just take uh, two bones from uh, each rib loin. Yep. We'll weigh them so we can see what the water loss is. Yep. And um, coat the one, and then uh, we begin to wait. Let's weigh this puppy. 3.8 pounds. Yeah. Ooh! Whoa! No one saw that coming. 10.8, 10.6. This one is gonna be the one to get covered in beef fat. Let's uh, cover this in fat. Butter this baby up. This is all kidney fat. So this is what we wanna use for our experiment because A, it's beef and we're putting on beef. That just makes sense. Two, we have a lot of it in case you couldn't tell. So what do we think is gonna happen here? I think the bit of mold that it picks up on the outside will just all get absorbed by this fat on the outside. Everything on the inside is preserved, so it'll be more tender, but a little less funky. Well, at 30 days dry age, I don't feel like you get too much funkiness, so I'm not worried about the funkiness that much. You're um, always worried about the funk. I don't, I'm never worried about the funk. I, I know where to find the funk. Man, this is really hard to cover in fat. It is working. This just looks like mashed potato mount, which is not a bad thing. So, the good thing about this experiment is we can forget about it for the next 30 days. Forget about you for 30 days? No, you can't ever do that. That's just mean. Forget about the beef for 30 days. All right, forget about the beef for 30 days. All right, we'll see you in 30 days. Our walk-in cooler is about 90% humidity, so the water loss takes a little bit of time, which is exactly what we want. Ah, no! Wow, 35 days. It's been that long? What a nap. What year is it? This looks very interesting. Yeah, got some funky monkeys. <laughs> So we've been aging these for 35 days now. We're picking up a little bit of mold um, here on the just regular dry age. What do you think about this guy? This really hardened, it's super hard. It's basically mummified beef. So curious to see uh, what the inside looks, looks yeah. like and really just want to cut into it. Okay. First off, super excited to see what the actual water loss is versus this because I'm really shocked how much this actually lost. For a side-by-side -side comparison, I think this is gonna be significantly less. And you can also see the muscles are kind of recessing in from the bone, and that's just all the water molecules that have evaporated from the muscles, so we know we have some more intense flavor happening. Whoa, really got dry. Oh, whoa. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't expect this. I know, this is crazy. Yeah. It looks like there's almost no water loss. Yeah. Um, it still looks super fresh, 
Whereas, I mean, we just took a bit of the face off here, but you can see how much sane water loss is here, almost looking like a dry aged ham. Yeah, this will have like a more, yeah, more like earthy flavor. I think it's gonna cook quicker because of the intense water loss that we're seeing. Yeah. And this is, just to remind people, this is the same animal, the same cut from either side of the loin. And just look at the size difference. Totally. Let's peel off this fat, weigh him again, see where we're at. Sounds great. All right. Well, this is gonna take a minute. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. There was obviously some sort of cavity there where it had like a little oxygen but no airflow. And so it just rotted in a kind of typical way. Like if we hung it out just in the middle of the room, it would rot in the same fashion. And if we ate that, we would be sick. We need to trim that and get rid of it. Right? Yeah, this kind of funkiness here, we can put this in a dry aged burger grind. This kind of stuff here, it needs to be like shaved off and thrown away immediately. Okay. Feel good about weighing this? Feel good about weighing this. We started at 10.8 pounds. 10.4. Whoa. Wow. That's a loss of less than a half of a pound. We should also reserve, as we trim this down, reserve to see how much is actually usable. Yes, I agree. Okay, so this one started at 10.6 pounds. And on our face piece as well. And 9.4. 9.4, so an entire other Over pound of water loss. Wow. This is right on the money of where we expect it to be after about 35 days. This has way more water retention than, than we would expect, but that water retention in the environment led to significant amount of rot that we just have to toss. How about we trim them up to see what the actual usable product yield is? Totally. I think that's where we're actually gonna see what we got here. We're both trimmed up now, and we're actually a lot closer, kind of looking the same. That eye is still much bigger than this eye. Yep. The other interesting thing I think we got here is like, look at your loss versus my loss. But this is usable, where as unfortunately, this has all got to go in the trash. Let's weigh them. So now we're at 5.8. That is a five, pound loss from where we started, then we had the 0.4 pounds of water loss, and then we had a further 4.6 pounds of loss that we have to throw away. It's already not looking good for the margins. Where are we at on that? Even six. So but that's 3.4 pounds of loss. You have three pounds of usable trim. Let's cut a couple steaks and finally try them and see what we're looking at. All right, let's do it. Great. Wow. Jesus, that's night and day. That's now, beautiful. Now I'm all, I'm excited about this one again. This looks amazing. I think it's so cool how the muscle has actually changed between the two, where you know there's more water in the muscle, not the fat. So that water loss has significantly shrunk the eye, whereas this is actually a lot bigger, and there's a lot more meat to um, to the one that was encapsulated in fat. I do think the dry age is still going to be way more intense. I think the fat coated did a really nice job of keeping the water in there because this is going to have a lot more mold funk to it than this. This is definitely going to be a lot more mild. I generally don't like steaks that are aged over 30 days. I want to taste the animal as it was raised. I want to taste the minerality. I want to taste the grass. This is going to taste more like dry age. Yep. It's going to taste more like that, that chemical process, the enzymatic process has really taken hold and the humidity is really going to be playing a factor there. This is going to taste more like the cow we received on the day it was received. Right. Just with a little bit of that enzymatic breakdown to bring out the flavor, I think I'm probably going to like this one a little bit more. I, I think so too. All right, let's season them and I guess we got to cook two really big steaks. Steak. Let's cook some steaks. So let's cook the one coated in beef fat first. 
Um, uh, B-Fat Baby. B-Fat Baby. God, I never get sick of this. Crooked Sticks? Yeah. yeah. Good cross, good cross. Woo! Starting stake number two. We gotta do the beef fat first, whole thing, that it's gonna have a much cleaner flavor than the open air dry age. Let's see if it stacks up to it. All right. It's cutting very tender. Yeah? Yeah. It feels very, very good. So, I think we can only use the eye of the ribeye versus eye of ribeye. Just keep it scientific. Okay. I feel like you can do, yep, there you go. It just pulls apart. Wow. That enzymatic breakdown is like really, really taken hold. I don't think we're lacking anything there. Very, very clean finish. That is phenomenal. It's mild. Yeah. But um, I actually like a little how mild bit of funkiness still. Right. It's not like punchy in the teeth, beefy, which I feel like this definitely will be. Um, very mild. The texture is so tender. It's very, very, very tender. I don't know if I've ever had a dry aged steak this tender before. It's a completely yeah. different experience. We gotta cut into this guy. All right. I gotta, I gotta know what's going on here. Just worth noting that in general, 100% grass fed steaks, especially dry aged, are best rare. Yeah. All this water runoff is from this steak. There is nothing under this steak. Let's see how these guys pull apart. And, yep, look at that. Those proteins have been broken down. You don't even need a knife. It doesn't have like the moisture of this one, obviously. <clears throat> the crust on it is more defined. There's a little bit more texture, but it's also almost like high grade tuna texture. Right. The minerality is much more pronounced mm -hmm. in the straight open air dry age. This is phenomenal. I mean, it has a little crust on the outside, like fried chicken, but the inside is like perfect beef tartare. This faded from my palate almost immediately. Mm -hmm. This is really coated like the top of my mouth. Like I can still taste that steak. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's lingering around. I still prefer the traditional dry age. I think I'm with you. I, if I didn't know that we had to throw away on almost four and a half pounds of meat that was unusable from this. It kind of kills it for you? Yeah. This, I can get like a really great burger on the side that tastes just as steaky as this. This is phenomenal, but this is more like what I would expect like a conventional dry aged steak to taste like. It's lacking the minerality and grassiness that you were talking about with the dry aged. Like this is unmistakably grass. This, because it doesn't quite have the lack of the, the water loss. It tastes more like a really good steak that yeah. I would expect anywhere. So, an experiment worth doing. Oh yeah. Le learned something, but the traditional way is still the best. We're old school boys. Sorry, Sam. That's how we live our life. <laughs>